Hello, I'm Dr. Leibovitz, your go-to foot doc. In today's video, we're going to discuss non-weight bearing and the ways to keep non-weight bearing. Uh, typically, people use crutches and a walker. Um, they're the most common. Uh, sizing is very, very important with that, but we're going to discuss that in another video. Today, we're going to talk about two novel uh, items that you can use to remain non-weight bearing. Now, when we say non-weight bearing, that's typically done after a surgery or an injury. And it's very important, no means no. A lot of people hear no weight bearing and think, well, I can walk on my heel or the side of my foot. If we put a white stocking on that foot, we want it to remain white and so it doesn't lengthen your recovery time. So today we're gonna to talk about the iWalk 2.0 and the knee, knee scooter. This is the iWalk 2.0, or as I like to call it, the pirate crutch. Now this will appeal to a certain population and it really has a big benefit if you have an upper extremity problem. If you have a shoulder problem, elbow, wrist problem, and you can't use crutches or a walker, this might be a good option for you. Uh, it also frees up your arms. You can walk around and have free access with your arms, unlike crutches, so you don't have to carry a backpack or a bag or anything like that with it. It really helps out. It's very, very light. It's fairly inexpensive. Uh, it's pretty mobile. If you want to pick up something, drop it, you can very well do that without much problem at all. Uh, it works with a cast boot or a cast, which is really nice. Now, the critical thing with this is fitting, and I highly, highly recommend that you go to a specific site, uh, a fitting center for this. And the local one is in Beach Grove, it's called Access Mobility. They're very, very good with that. I stay away from the go sales, uh, internet, eBay. You may save five or $10, but you won't get fitted properly, and that's what makes this thing really, really work. With this, remember, tight is right. The tighter the straps, the more secure to you, the better it will work. Balance is king. If you don't have good coordination or balance, this is not your option. This is not a good thing for you. Practice in a safe environment. I recommend starting off in a pretty narrow hallway. Um, things you want to be cautious about. You need a very good leg on the other side. If you have a hip, knee, or foot problem there, probably not a good idea because you're so dependent on that leg. You're, it's doing twice as much work. It has to do a pretty good job for you. Again, balance is really important. It took me about two or three days to get very accustomed and used to this. Um, so judge it accordingly. Knee pressure is a problem. I have a little bump right below my knee and after about 30-40 minutes of walking on this it gets a little bit tender. I've been trying to adjust that out so careful. If you have Osgood sliders as a kid this may be an issue for you too. You can't sit or drive with this but that's not really a big deal because in about 10 or 15 seconds you can remove this. If you've ever had a bicycle helmet or a backpack you know how to do that. Um, and it's pretty easy. One of the other drawbacks is they don't supply you with an eye patch or parrot. Now this is the knee cart, knee stroller, uh, kneely cart, um, and they're pretty popular now. You see an awful lot of them around. The nice advantage of this is that the learning curve is very quick and pretty easy. Um, they're available in many, many locations. You can bling these out at a cart, at a horn, uh, which is also nice to do. We get, you get bonus points for stylizing these. Now what you have to be cautious of is they're not really compact, so if you're traveling with these, just kind of be aware and check out the space you have available. Now the mass, steering mass does fold down um, to some extent, uh, but just be cautious when you travel. The turning radius, the wider and more stable it is, that's good, but that affects the turning radius, which is down, so you expect to do a lot of three-point turns, moving forward, moving back, uh, and practicing that way. It's like backing up a trailer. Uh, you also need a very good leg. Uh, we found this out, we had office races and you may want to check out that video. Uh, if your leg is not real strong, after about three laps we were pretty much tired out and breathing pretty hard so there's a lot of energy that's used with this. People that have this generally uh, sooner or later they'll fall and it's always to the side of the injury or the surgery. Uh, I've never had anybody hurt their surgery site but just be cautious. This one's really stable and that would be really tough but if you get it up to speed that could be a problem and all brakes are not equal. These have compression brakes which are pretty solid. Some of them have the uh, really flimsy Walmart, uh, Kmart uh, brakes that they put on kids' bikes. Not really good, especially you'll find out when you go down a uh, handicap ramp, you'll be meeting a lot of people that you didn't intend to. Um, there's some of them that actually have drum brakes and those are pretty heavy duty. Um, again, they're, they're not real compact, they're not real light, they're between 25 and 30 pounds, so keep that in mind if you have to move that. So regardless of which option you choose, you want to have early skills and early strength. Practice these way before you need to. Um, if you know you're going to have your surgery, start working on your arm strength if you're going to use crutches or a walker. Uh, practice with this. Prepare your home. Watch out for loose carpets, door jams. Um, those all can, can be problems. And just keep in mind, especially when you go out, you will be a bull in a china shop. 
Thank you for watching. This is Dr. Leibovitz, your go-to foot doc.